Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about how to learn how to code as a beginner. So I typically talk about cybersecurity content on this channel, but I do think that coding is one of the most important skills that you can have if you're working in tech. And I previously came from a software engineering background before I came into cybersecurity. And one of the skills that have been really useful in helping my career is my coding skills. So in this video, I'll be going over a few different steps on how to more easily learn how to code, especially for someone who is completely new or maybe find coding a little bit intimidating. So I think one of the most important things to think about when you're learning how to code is, is choosing which language you should start with. For example, if you're starting out with C++ compared to Python, you're going to have very different learning paths and you're also going to be learning different things. Where C++ is a much more lower level language compared to Python that is typically used for scripting or web development. So you should be thinking about what you want to use coding for the most in your future job or wherever you want to go because that's also going to determine the types of languages that you choose to learn and of course I'm just using cybersecurity as an example but for example if you want to go into red teaming or pen testing then you probably want to learn JavaScript or Python just because they are more just because they're more easy to use scripting languages then you probably want to learn a language that is more typically used in the malware space which malware can be written in almost basically any language so it's up to you what you want to learn but I do think Go is a unique option so choosing the actual coding language that you want to learn wisely is important is important for the types of jobs you want to go into, difficulty level and the learning curve of the language that you're learning, as well as all the use cases of that language. All right, the next step I have for you guys is, is coding up projects that are actually relevant to you and what you're interested in. So for example, when I was first learning how to code, my first languages were Python and Java, and I was learning these languages in a traditional college course, which basically meant we had the same types of labs or projects that were, that were basically showing us the basics of for loops, if statements, basic data types, Booleans, basic things like that. Not even getting to data structures yet. And since this was my first time getting my hands on any kind of coding in my life, for a lot of this, while I could understand it, it wasn't. It was harder to be given a use case and then know what to do until I was in a later programming course for C Sharp. And I'm sure I mentioned this before on my channel, but C Sharp was probably the first coding language I ever actually enjoyed writing code in. Although it is very similar to Java in terms of syntax, but the main reason is because of the fact that. Prior to learning C Sharp, all I was doing was basically just iterating through for loops and, and I didn't really know how to apply code to, to problems I actually find interesting. For example, in my C Sharp class, my projects were all based on games. So for example, we were coding up things like Bingo, Hangman, the Mastermind game. Because these were basically commonly known board games, it basically opened a whole nother door for me in terms of thinking about how I could use code to solve actual problems that I can think of logically in my head compared to just iterating through a for loop without even knowing why I'm iterating through this for loop. So I think the challenge here for you guys is when you are learning a new coding language and you've already gone through the basics, the next step is most likely to find an actual project that resonates with you in your head and makes sense to you so that you're able to code it out in a way that is interesting to you and not just blindly following the basic courses that you find online or in a class. For example, the three ways that someone could win in Bingo, which is straight across, straight down, or diagonally. And basically my bingo board was a five by five array. And prior to this, I had never even thought of arrays as something tangible. I was just iterating through random arrays. But now that I have a bingo board that takes the place of the underlying data structure that is an array, it's way more easy to grasp in your head because it's something that actually makes sense to you. And if you don't know where to start on projects that you want to code, then I would definitely start out with games just because, just because you can choose between one player, two player. Think about the logistics of that. You have actual goals, which are winning criteria or, or trying to get as many points as possible. It just makes coding a lot more interactive and fun compared to compared to the very boring slash traditional ways of just learning a data structure, understanding what it does, and then moving on to the next one without fully understanding all of the use cases and, and potential nuances that you can learn when actually using it in a hands-on problem. All right, the next thing is the documentation versus versus quick googled answers. So believe me when I say I'm a huge fan of online forums where you can find help on your code, understand how to do certain things in your code, any workarounds for any blockages that you find on a day-to-day -day basis. But I also think that there are times when going through the actual documentation of that coding language can also be helpful compared to a quick google search. 
I do think there's always going to be times when you want to look at the documentation and when you want to quickly Google something. For example, if your code is spitting out some random error message and you don't know what it means, then you're probably going to Google it and find some kind of resolution or some steps to help you move forward to resolving that issue. It's only when you copy and paste a solution that works for you. Well, I definitely am someone who has done this all the time in the past. I do think when it's for something specific and maybe you're now using a method or data structure that you haven't used before, but you're kind of copied and pasted it and now it works it would still be helpful to look it up in the actual official documentation of that coding language to make sure that you know everything that it does just in case there's some edge cases that end up breaking your code or gives you some kind of output that you didn't expect so you're really kind of saving yourself some time early on before something gets messed up and then you have to go figure out what actually went wrong by debugging and that can take of course hours and you already know that if you're someone who has spent time debugging a single problem and it can take hours even days to find out what the issue actually is so if you just save yourself some time by looking at the actual method that you're using that you copied and pasted from somewhere and just making sure that it's actually good for your use cases and doesn't have any random loopholes that you didn't expect then that's going to save you a lot of time in the future when you're painstakingly going through your code and figuring out what went wrong and a lot of times going through hard debugging sessions like that are also what get people frustrated and give up learning how to code because of all these random nuances or bugs or issues that come up in your code so it's a lot easier to just get that over with right in the beginning so you already have that new method or new data structure crossed off the list when you're looking for something that went wrong our next thing is probably one that is a little bit unexpected but it is interactive coding games so I know typically these are for kids or, or people who are teaching their kids how to code. Essentially, they're online platforms or websites where you're able to interactively play a game and maybe build out certain actions or certain features on that website that kind of match what you would do in actual code. For example, there may be some if blocks or while loops that are portrayed as building blocks in that game. And this is an awesome way, not just for kids, to be able to wrap your head around, around what your code is actually doing and how to best structure your code. So something that can be hard in the beginning is figuring out is figuring out how to structure your programming files. For example, when to make new classes, when to make a new method. Hopefully you don't have everything in your program in one file. And different interactive coding games that you can find online can provide you insight on ways, on ways to think about how to structure your code so that when you come back to it a week or a month later, you can still understand what's happening. Hopefully you have comments in your code. And if you think about it a month later, if you have one giant method that is kind of like like the bulk of your application compared to if you had multiple different methods hopefully titled in a way that you can understand and remember it's going to be a lot easier for you to pick up where you left off with the application with multiple methods that are named properly compared to the application with one method that has everything dumped in one place and you don't know where it starts and where it ends and how to pick up from where you left off. Our right, next thing is group learning and paired programming. So while I do think it's definitely possible to learn how to code by yourself and just and just going online reading some documentation and just finding some finding a project template and just going along with it figuring out ways that you can tinker with it it's so important to note that a lot of times working with someone else or being able to pick their brain or using them as a rubber ducky can be really helpful in terms of your learning process and helping you speed up in terms of accelerating the actual learning that you're doing for example, if you're learning how to do something a certain way, someone else may be able to provide a perspective that's a little bit different, maybe using a different method or a different or a different data structure that you haven't heard of before, and their way of doing it could be a lot more efficient in terms of time and space complexity that you may not have thought of previously because you weren't aware of it. So it really is just bringing knowledge together and having someone else to pick their brain about is really helpful in getting the ball rolling. And you learn a lot faster when you're learning in a pair or learning in a group because you're able to have that wealth of knowledge share that you wouldn't typically have when you're just coding by yourself and you don't have to be working on the same projects you could just be working on your own projects and then coming together maybe once in a while once a week or once every two weeks and just talking about the projects you're working on the problems that you're facing the bugs basically that you can't seem to get through and this other person may be able to provide a different perspective that can help you get through your bugs a lot faster compared to when you're just heads down sitting for hours trying to think about what you're doing wrong but you may be going through the same mental loop over and over again compared to bringing in another perspective who has never seen the code before and, and maybe they can point out something that you hadn't thought of or haven't looked at yet and honestly it just makes coding a bit more fun because you're able to talk about it with someone else and nowadays there are so many people who are trying to get into the tech space and become software developers or any other sector in technology 
And I'm sure you don't have to look too far to find someone who is willing to at least try and learn how to code with you. Whether it be a friend, a coworker, your parents, your siblings, there's most likely someone in your life who is interested in also learning how to code. Otherwise, there are many different Discord forums and channels online that you can look that you can look for to find other like-minded groups. And by the way, we actually have a Discord channel. It is mostly cybersecurity related, but I'm sure if you're looking to learn how to code, there are definitely other people who are also interested in learning how to code. Even in cybersecurity just because of how versatile the skill is so definitely check out the discord channel linked below but the last thing on this list i wanted to discuss is boot camps and courses so there are so there are many 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 courses and boot camps out there to learn how to code it's probably the biggest sector in terms of boot camps it's probably one of the most sought after skills in that course and boot camp space but i do think it's for a good reason of course if you're someone who is currently a student or don't want to pay for a course yet, I would definitely go for the free courses. There are many free courses on YouTube. If you look for them online, there are hours and hours of free coding courses in the languages that you want to learn, which honestly, the language I've seen the most of in free coding courses is Python. Python is definitely one of the most versatile, beginner-friendly languages that you can learn with many, many use cases across many different sectors in data science, cybersecurity, software engineering, everything in between. And I'm not saying that it doesn't have its cons. Python is definitely not the best in terms of performance. And even the libraries in Python that are considered efficient are written in C or other languages. So definitely something to keep in mind. But as a beginner, when you're just starting out, I do think Python is a good starting point just because of how clean and simple the syntax is, honestly. And if you find that after you've completed all the free courses and trainings that you find online and maybe you're trying to learn something more specialized or you're trying to go deeper into Python into more intermediate or advanced courses, then I would definitely consider the paid courses or paid boot camps that can take you to that next level for you to find a job, start an internship, or just or just make a career switch into coding. And I'm sure that there are other ways that you can learn how to code that I haven't listed in this 10 to 15 minute video. And if you have any of the resources to share, please drop them in the comments below to share with the community. And if you liked this video or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. Let me know in the comments below if you have any specific video topics that you might want to see from me in the future. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!